Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about how to manifest with power and predictability through concentrating your forces. This idea of um, how manifestation works and how to get things to happen in a predictable way is absolutely graspable if we can apply certain techniques and ideas and understand how the imagination works and that it is the operant power of everything in this world. So I wanna go into that, but before we do hit the like button so that other people who wouldn't normally be able to see this will see this video, hit the subscribe button if you want broken down, systematic techniques on how to get whatever you want, anything that you want by means of manifestation, which is the most powerful thing in the world and hit the bell icon right now and then we'll get right into this. So. Concentrating your forces, what do I mean by that? So there's a couple different themes that run through manifestation and you'll probably hear them sporadically throughout any resource that you read or watch or attempt to do. And it also um, applies to how we feel when we're manifesting, right? So faith is a word that is often used as it comes to manifesting, right? Now, my source of truth for manifesting written thousands of years ago. It's how I first got into manifesting in the first place is talked about in the Christian Bible, right? I read the King James Version, um, but it doesn't really matter because oftentimes I'll go back and look at the Greek and the Hebrew and stuff like that just to get the deep meaning behind it, right? The metaphysical meaning, the manifesting meaning behind this. And in that, in that scripture, there's a lot of reference to words such as believing or faith and these words are often quite ambiguous and it's at least for me at first when i got into this and people were saying oh just believe just have faith i thought it was supposed to be like i questioned myself constantly right i would imagine certain things or at the time i would pray for certain things and then i would be worried that i wasn't believing i thought it was some essence that must be present within me in order for something to manifest right something to appear on the world after i've envisioned it or imagined it within my imagination so but nevertheless that actually caused a lot of anxiety and i even had ocd for a period of time thinking like oh my god do i believe do i believe and i get that question a lot from people i get that comment a lot either in email or the vip program or one-on-one -on -one coaching but that word if we look at it very closely, like if you look at it in the book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about, um, it, it compares faith to a lot of different, it gives the definition of it, right? So faith in, um, if I were to summarize it, it talks about how it is the substance of things hoped for and the things that aren't yet seen. But then it also says that by faith, we understand that the word of God has shaped or framed the world. But as we go along, we can almost a lot of times substitute that word for imagine in and of itself, right? And so ultimately what I've come to find out is that faith is essentially a combination between the ability to become fully immersed within the imaginal act coupled with the expectation or trust through systematic testing and proving to ourselves that manifesting works that we will receive the thing that we've imagined if we follow a very specific process. So how does that, or what does that have to do with concentrating your forces? So ultimately there's a couple components. We're talking about experience. When we have experience with manifesting, then we can rightfully assume or expect that whatever we imagine, if we do it in a proper way, then we will be able to receive it, right? There's another verse that's in scripture, but it's in the Old Testament, and it talks about how God's word cannot come back void, but it must accomplish the thing and basically return unto the sender, that thing that was sent out. So the word of God in another, in another way is um, essentially a facet or aspect of the imagination. So our imagination, if you go by the teachings of Neville Goddard, or if you just simply analyze correctly scripture or the Bible, you'll find that God is the human imagination, right? Crucified on man, the eternal body is the imagination, which is our very life force, right? The eye of man is God and the eye of man is awareness. If I asked you, who or what is it that is aware of your experience? 
The answer is, I am, I am. And in Exodus, it talks about how Moses asks God what his name is, and he says his name is I am. And even, um, I was doing a little bit more research recently on just some other, you know, uh, like religious books or things of that nature. And I found that in Sanskrit, the most powerful words or for a mantra is, I don't know it in the initial language, but it actually is I am as well. So this is a general concept that's a common thread be between all religions and all power, which is where you get affirmations from, right? I am rich, I am whatever the case is, that will impress your subconscious mind and replicate in that exact fashion the words that you have put in your imagination. So I am rich, I am rich. You repeat it enough, it impresses your subconscious mind. Ultimately, you'll be left in a position where you have to then say, I am rich. But in order for that to manifest, or in order for you to say that, that truth must then manifest. So that's a little preface or premise as far as the I am is the imagination. And as it relates to faith, immersing ourselves in an imaginal act to the point to which we can fully embody it and experience it as if it is actually happening, that is one, I would say, concept as it relates to the idea of faith, right? All things are possible to him that believe, right? That's another quote from the Bible, another verse from the Bible. And then in, the, in another book, that same verse is slightly modified and it says all things are possible to God. So it's equating God to him who believes. So I know this is a lot of stuff, but this is how we go through scripture and the Bible and a lot of other resources and find that if we put it to the test, we can actually prove that man is God, right? Christ is God in man's form. And that is the imagination, it's the eternal body of man. And envisioning or imagining to the best of our ability the thing that we want to experience as if it is already done, that is an aspect of what faith is, right? So concentrating our forces. When I say that, I mean all aspects of the imagination, right? Manifestation is a power. Christ is God's power in man, and that is the imagination in man. And so how do we utilize that to the best of our ability to build faith and then manifest whatever it is that we want? And that's what we're talking about here. So ultimately, concentrating our forces, imaginal forces, and becoming in our imagination the person that we wish to be. What do you wanna be? Just think about it for a second. Think of a couple different things that you wish to manifest in your life? Do you want a better job? Do you want to be rich? Do you want a husband or wife? Do you want to have a, your body changed? Do you want to lose weight, gain weight? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to increase your manifestation skills? Do you want to increase your people skills? Do you want to be looked at in a very specific way? Any and all of these things are possible if you can believe or if you can imagine. And so how, what specific things can we do, namely concentrating our forces or using different facets of our imagination to get a very lifelike representation of the thing that we wish to experience. So with that said, right, all of that is the premise. And we ask ourselves, if I am is the power to, of the creative power in man, right, or woman, whatever, mankind, if I am is that power, and meaning whatever we are aware of, I am rich, I am happy, I am peaceful, I am self-assured, I am self-confident, I am popular, I am famous, right? Basically what it's saying is, is that whatever we become aware of in our imagination, in our awareness, will take form, right? Will take form. The substance of things hoped for, so everything is framed by that substance in our mind, by experiencing it before we've actually experienced it on the screen of space. Just the same way as I am, and we, were, we say a predicate at the end of that statement, will manifest on the screen of space. In that same way, if we become aware with other facets of our imagination, all the facets of our imagination, we will get an even more full embodiment, a full representation, a full scene in our imagination that will eventually outpicture the end, right? So what are the different facets of our imagination? 
So the way that I define the imagination is essentially any sense or any feeling or emotion or experience that is not pushed out on this world. So it's anything that's occurring internally, right? So the subconscious mind is the thing that creates. That is the thing that if we can get our ideas into it, it's a done deal. It will be pushed out on the screen of space, right? That's that's the subconscious mind, right? So our experiences before, any experience that we've ever gone through that has left either an emotional reaction upon us or something that we that has an impact on us will be stored within our subconscious mind, right? So that basically what that means is that anything that we've ever experienced that's left an impression will continue to create over and over and over. And this is why we are left with experiencing a lot of the same patterns in life. Think on your past relationships. How have they gone? Have you felt like the other person always leaves you? Have you felt like you always get insecure? Have you felt like something always winds up happening that leaves you in a very specific, similar position as it did to the relationship before? Maybe not. A, maybe it's not all of them, but a lot of them, right? And the same thing with finances. Do you find that you'll get a good job, but then you'll lose it? Do you find like you can save a lot of money, but then something happens and you have to give it all away, right? Or seasons of life, right? Do you feel at certain times in your life you're happy and then other patterns, the, the pattern erupts of being sad or, or miserable or something to that effect, right? That is because that was, those experiences rest within our subconscious mind and they consistently create. This is what brings an air of stability into our world. But it's also why some people live completely different experiences than us. Have you ever found someone that you just don't see eye to eye with? They have a completely different life experience than you do. This is because their subconscious mind is creating different things. They have different impressions upon their subconscious mind. You can even go as far as saying, you will be surrounded by people who validate your life experience, not because generally you're consciously making it happen, but because your subconscious is manifesting it, right? But in the subconscious, it's impressed by the senses, right? Which is taste, touch, smell, um, sight, hearing, and I, I don't know if I missed anything, and then emotion. So those are regular senses, but what's beautiful about the subconscious mind is that it cannot tell the difference between physical reality and imaginal reality, right? What's happening in our imagination. So another aspect, which I just remembered is self-talk as well, our inner voice, right? All of these are imaginal faculties. They exist within awareness and they're independent of the external reality. And in fact, these are the things that create. These are the aspects and facets that create. They're constantly being activated all the time. We're continuously impressing our subconscious mind over and over and over and over again. So to concentrate our forces, what we should do then, what we should be doing then is utilizing every single facet of our imagination when we are trying to manifest. Now, just to be clear, each facet of our imagination, meaning if I just used my inner voice, that will create. If I just used emotion, that will create. If I just used imaginal touching, imaginal hearing, imaginal smelling, any of those independently has the power and capacity to create, and they are. They're doing it over and over and over again. But by concentrating our forces, concentrating our power, then we can get a very full representation, a very complete representation of the experience. So how do we outline the experience that we want to imagine, right? So the premise is when we imagine something and we impress it, it will be created and brought forth to us. It will be returned to our awareness, right? That's been my experience tens of thousands of times. That's been a lot of you guys' experiences from emails to people I talk to in coaching and whatever the case is, right? So utilizing and, 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 and thinking about what would I be seeing, tasting, touching, feeling, hearing? What would I be emotionally sensing, right? What would the experience be? What would my inner voice be? What would another person be explaining to me if I had already manifested the thing that I want? So think of the end, right? You, you take your desire and you think from the end. 
if you want that money. Imagine a time after you've received the money. What would you be doing with it, right? You would already have it. It would already be there. You would have probably already gone through the initial excitement of receiving it. What would you be doing? What would be an essential thing that would only happen if you already had that money, if you had that house, if you had that wife, if you had that husband, if you were a manifesting machine? How would you be conveying that to another person? Right? Would you be spending time with that person explaining it? Would they be complimenting you on your ability to manifest on, or on your ability to make money? Right? You think from the end and then you add any time frame after the end because what we, the, the point of this is that whatever we bring into our imagination will be a seed will be created, an imaginal seed, and then the external reality will grow it until it gets to that exact point that you've imagined. And then oftentimes it can stop there. So we always want to go a little bit after that so we can make sure that it will get there all the way to the end and even go a little bit after the end. And then define, look at the senses, right? Experiences and senses and thoughts, right? So what would the experience be? And then what would I be seeing, tasting, touching, feeling, hearing, emotionally, feeling, saying, what would other people say? What would the setting be? We go through all of those very specific characteristics of an imaginal act, right? Don't forget your inner dialogue as well, right? So once we're in the imaginal scene itself, once I am shaking someone's hand because he's congratulating me on my success, I should have my inner dialogue there too, right? I'm so excited and I'm grateful that someone is shaking my hand and congratulating me, right? And at the same time, having that person saying something to me, congratulating me, right? And then feeling the feelings of shaking his hand and such and so forth, on and on and on, right? But the key, one of the keys is if we're concentrating our forces, what we want to also do is make that con condensed short small scene that's an equivalent representation to the end result. So it doesn't have to be a 10 minute scene. In fact, sometimes it's better if we make it three to five seconds or 10 seconds, as long as it has all of the characteristics that we're looking for, which would only be happening if and only if our desire had been fulfilled, then that is a sufficient usage of concentrating our forces. Now, what's going to happen when we do that? We should bring that into our imagination and we should replay that scene over and over until it has an air of naturalness. It should be fluid or fluent. It should happen automatically. We should replay it over and over until there's no strain, until we don't have to think about it. We want it to be almost as if it's a, easy, a, a memory easily coming up and replaying it. Once we do that, it becomes natural and then it will impress the subconscious mind and then that will be pushed out on the screen of space without you doing anything at all. So that's an amazing, amazing thing. But that's the one facet of concentrating your forces in order to get what you want. The other aspect that besides that big portion right there is to be consistent. You want to flood your reality with different time-tested manifestations using scientific method, right? Imagining, writing down what you're going to imagine, doing it to the point where it's fluent in your mind, and then letting go, and then keeping track of all of those different manifestations. So ultimately, as the days, weeks, months, and years carry on, you'll have hundreds or thousands of different manifestations that you can refer to. You'll know how long something generally takes. You'll know what, how much energy it takes, how long you have to imagine, how many times you have to imagine. You'll know what types of scenes you should imagine. And ultimately, for me, when I very first began this journey back in 2011, I believe it was, that was my saving grace because ever since then, right, someone told me to keep track of all of my prayers answered. And ultimately, I have so many notebooks. I probably have this, this much of full-blown notebooks filled with experiences. That's why I always say I've done this thousands of times, tens of thousands of times. And those combination of things, right, that that concentrating your forces of imagining, right? Your, all your senses and emotions and inner dialogue, etc., coupled with the experience over the days, weeks, months, months, and years, that to me 
is faith. That to me is concentrating your forces. That to me is understanding and knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that every single thing that I've imagined properly will be pushed out on the screen of space. And that is priceless. If you know that, if you can do that, then you will essentially, you'll have no need for anyone to explain to you anything. You'll be able to see through a lot of nonsense and you'll be able to help the next person by saying, hey, listen, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been testing it. I've read everything. I've put everything to the test and this is what works. For me, without testing it, there's no book, there's no person, there's no YouTuber, there's no movie, there's nothing that could have given me the raw power that I developed through testing over the years. Yes, all those resources are important. It's important to hear what people have to say. It's important to hear what people are writing. It's important to hear other people's experience, but nothing trumps one's own experience. Nothing trumps your experience. So concentrate your forces, use that formula and figure out what do you want Use every facet or aspect of your imagination and do it over and over and over again. And throughout the ages, you will master manifesting beyond what anyone can ever say or do. You can see through anything and have faith and confidence and expectation that your imagination truly is the God as described in scripture and that with your imagination, all things are possible. So I hope that was helpful. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want more broken down um, systems and techniques and ideas and translations of all different manifestation techniques as it relates to systematic experience and time testing and bell icon if I didn't say that and I'll see you next time.